It's not uncommon that as a service designer, you end up in an environment that is strongly product focused, whether that product is a app or maybe even a car. In this episode, you're going to learn how to successfully make service design work in these kinds of environments. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stick around. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Christian Appelt. This is a service design show episode 128. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. On this show, we explore what's beneath the surface of service design. What are the invisible things that make a difference between success and failure, all to help you design services that make a positive impact on people and business. Our guest in this episode is Christian Appelt. Christian is the head of service design at Polestar, and Polestar is the manufacturer of one of the most iconic electric cars at this moment. Christian's task is to lead and scale service design within Polestar. And due to the success of Polestar, they are quickly growing. Figuring out how to successfully embed and organize service design within this context is an interesting journey. And in this episode, Christian is going to share some of his most important learnings with you. You're going to learn why it's important to build a common and shared language across all stakeholders and how to actually do that. And we'll also dig into the never ending challenge of how to demonstrate the value that you're bringing as a service design team to the business. If you enjoy conversations like this that help you to level up your service design skills, make sure to click that subscribe button and that bell icon to be notified whenever a new episode comes out. So that's all for the intro. And now let's quickly jump into the interesting conversation with Christian Appelt. Welcome to the show, Christian. Hi, Mark. Good to have you on. I think this is going to be a really interesting episode, uh, at least for me, because I've seen which topics we're going to discuss. Christian, you have a rich uh, history. For the people who haven't looked you up on LinkedIn yet, could you give a short introduction of who you are and what you do these days? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, currently, I'm working at uh, Polestar, Polestar Performance AB. Uh, heading up a unit we call Service Design Unit. And before I came to Polestar, uh, two and a half years ago, I was at uh, IKEA and before that uh, at uh, SKF, ball bearing manufacturer. Uh, in both cases, uh, uh, I was focusing on uh, innovation and in innovation leadership. And for the people uh, who don't know yet, who or what Polestar is, that will of course change in a few years, everybody will know it. What is Polestar? Polestar, it's uh, a new uh, electric vehicle uh, company, uh, performance brand, uh, very much design focused. And uh, it's really exciting because we focus a lot on, on, uh, on new business models, uh, business to consumer, that's where we started. So we sell cars directly online and also uh, keeping the customer uh, uh, journey close to us. Uh, so we have that uh, customer relationship with us all the time and not just uh, an OEM. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to talk a lot about service design within uh a car manufacturer today uh, but before we dive into that christian i want to go over a quick rapid fire question round with you five questions and the idea is to answer them as quickly as possible uh let's start with question number one christian what's always in your fridge uh that's a good uh, of it's milk and it's butter <laughs> milk and butter okay <laughs> there are so many books behind you but which one are you reading right now um it's actually uh, yeah it's actually this one uh, i got it from from uh, your uh, one of your talks here um, or which design is really for design orgs yeah exactly yeah peter That's, merles yeah very Recommended inspiring book. yeah i uh, i agree uh question number three is uh, which superpower would you like to have um Mind reading. Mind reading. Yeah. <laughs> Become an anthropologist and you'll get uh, you'll get quite far. Yeah, close w to it. <laughs> what did you want to become when you were a kid? 
I was actually I wanted to be uh, like a uh, exploring biologist and going in deep into the jungle and, and exploring new medicines and stuff like that. Okay, uh, your career took an interesting turn. Um, yeah. Finally, uh, you're all about service design these days, but do you remember when you first heard about the term or got in touch with it? Yeah, it was maybe six six years six seven years ago it's i think it's really interesting these uh, topics because uh, you suddenly realize that you have done or worked uh, with service design all your life you have this holistic approach where you move from from uh, really abstract levels down to details up and back and forth and up and down uh, so but as a as a uh, as a topic, uh, it was actually only six years ago. Hmm, hmm. And uh, I, I've heard many stories of people saying, I've been doing service design for years, only <laughs> just to recently realize that there is a term for it. So uh, that sounds, sounds like a very familiar story. Yeah. Christian, um, when did Polestar sort of get... Uh, uh, when did they start? When did they start the uh, the company? Yeah, yeah, of course, it's yeah. Polestar, where does it come from? It was uh, an engineering company working on how to tune a uh, car, racing cars, and and uh, also uh, conventional Volvo cars. And it was um, uh, uh, we went from that brand into uh, wait a minute, uh, we have a electric. Uh, car coming up in, in originating from Volvo. So it was Volvo who bought that this tuning company and then moved it into the electrical vehicles uh, space and, and focusing on uh, uh, performance, uh, um, yeah, a performance EV brand. So the reason why I'm asking this and the reason why uh, sort of the context or the heritage of the uh, company is important because often um, when service design gets embedded into an organization, it's not from the start, right? It's often, and especially in a manufacturing uh, oriented uh, environment, like service design isn't the first thing that a company establishes. And I wanna talk with you today about how did service design evolve with us, with Impulse, or what are some uh, challenges, what are some opportunities that you see? So um, let's dive a little bit into that. And maybe the first question is, how did service design get into a company that is all about manufacturing and features and, and cars, tangible stuff? Yeah, yeah. I think um, if we look specifically at Polestar, we're really lucky because we have a CEO, Thomas Ingelat, who, who He's a designer by heart. He's uh, the head of uh, design in, in uh, he was that, uh, is that and was that in, in Volvo and he became the CEO of uh, uh, Polestar. And if we go back uh, a few years, uh, like uh, three years when, when uh, it was uh, uh, apparent that we would be this uh, EV brand and, and uh, started out on, okay, we're starting out with the marketing and things like that. Before that, there's been some pioneers look, really looking into the customer journey of uh, a performance EV car brand. Uh, so it's uh, actually has had service design. Uh, we've had that with us all the time, uh, design thinking uh, approach. Uh, but then really quickly it it, uh, it was uh, all about uh, go to market and sure. getting all those mvps out there so we moved from f really hard focus on on search design and then to a product organization and now we're kind of moving back and and uh, having the customer centric approach when we have these real customers with us mm -hmm. and um one of the questions that I get often and that is also addressed in that book, Org Design for Design Orgs, is where where do you place service design inside 
an organization and again especially in organizations that that's probably very much oriented on the tangible thing uh, can you can you share a little bit where is it now where has it been yeah in, in at polestar it's uh, we're kind of located so to say in the digital organization but we have not had so much focus on the organization as such uh, it has been an uh, organic growth uh, we've expanded really quickly and uh, it's been focused on what do we need to do what we do we need to accomplish and just do that together uh, but now we're moving into a kind of scale up uh, of the company and then we need some more uh, structure and, and uh, uh, more yeah structure to, to define what needs to to um, to uh, yeah be able to, to scale. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So before we dive into into that scaling part, I'm really curious, you you you're sort of part of the digital side of the company. Why is that? I can make some assumptions, but I'm curious what your take on uh, that is. How how did that evolve? Yeah. So as I said, it's uh, very much an organic development and doing things together. And uh, we talk about Polestar being a truly digital company in the sense that it's not like we and them or, or taking over something that should be executed. It's how do we build that together with the stakeholders that are responsible for different uh, uh, services towards the customers. Uh, so it's I think it's just um, almost a coincidence that it uh, mm -hmm. what has happened because you you could actually uh, at least from my opinion you could put it in in like a business development or marketing or or or, or digital or um, yeah any place as long as you collaborate and and have uh, alliances within the organization so um, with regards to alliances, you mentioned also to me that there is a customer experience team. How how is how is your relate how is the relationship between service design, maybe the digital team, the customer experience team? How is that currently operating? It's a, a, I would say a joint venture in 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 the means that we are working totally uh, together. We have uh, set up uh, team sessions, like weekly meetings and things like that, where we uh, look into challenges that we have, uh, both from digital and, and customer experience uh, team. And, and we kind of, uh, we could look at it as the customer experience team provide the, the, the direction and, and the tools on insights and analytics and so on and, and the search design team is the executors, the researchers, the, the, the explorers and, and uh, uh, the ones who, who facilitate the um, yeah, finding the, the, the right questions about hmm. what should, should we do now or later or not, not at all. So I'm, I'm curious and I would love to here if you can share an example of what is it that the service design team actually has done or worked on like what is a quote-unquote typical service design challenge within polestar yeah that we we have moved a lot from focusing on on the digital products as such since they have very much been mvps and then what can, um, sorry to interrupt you, uh, but a digital no, no product worries. is yeah. Uh, sorry, so it's uh, the yeah. Oh, you have your own nomenclature and stuff like that, but it's uh, the interface that you have with the customer being digital. Uh, it could be on a website, an uh, order page, or a, a product page, or a, or. A, um, Tool that you use when you sign up people for a test drive or um, the individual like that. digital touch points, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's been very much about about them as such, uh, and then then we have kind of moved further upstream and also kind of on a higher level when it comes to a holistic approach, closer to actually what do, do what do we need to accomplish here? Not just uh, 
in the, this kind of section or micro journey, but uh, from a more holistic perspective uh, of the company and uh, looking into different areas, we have uh, we have managed to to uh, pull the stakeholders with us and and make make them use uh, of service design as a competence for strategic decisions and so on well, prioritize things when should we do things or, or not and so on that sounds like a, a dream to a lot of service designers actually being able to be in that strategic position and be able to help influence decision making and again I, i'm curious is there a, a recent uh, example or project where you felt that service design really contributed to making a smarter or a better decision? Yeah, we just kind of uh, the, the last year here, or especially the last uh, six months here, we, we've seen where it's referenced. Uh, you see how we, how business stakeholders or, or key stakeholders, as we call them, use uh, design thinking and, and service design language uh, talking to each other on on uh, when to 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 uh, do what and, and so and uh, and so on so it's more or less uh, everywhere but at the same time there are also uh, different different stakeholders that are more aware and and less aware mm -hmm. so it's um, we talk uh, a lot about how can we lift the floor for for everyone um, and and uh, of course it's a bit sensitive for me to to kind of sure. dive into specifics and, and so on but uh, th there are a lot of uh, uh, it's it's when we help the key stakeholders um, ask questions uh, they are often they are looking for for solutions but uh, as we kind of take them on this journey they start to explore things and start to ask questions and then they, as we kind of always wish for people to, to ask the right questions. Uh, so that's really re rewarding in, in the work that we, mm. we do. Mm. And, and it's also something that have grown the, the awareness uh, inside the company. And also, uh, yeah, how we communicate and, and so on. Now, um, you have a team of about, how, how large is the team? How would you... Yeah, so we, we call it the service design unit. Yeah, it's, uh, that's better plus, sense. Plus 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 sixty people. Okay, but it's not just it's not just service designers. It's sure. uh, bus business analysts and digital designers, UX, UI, and and so on. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why I'm asking that is okay. Let's say it's a, a service design unit of uh, about sixty people. Um, one of the questions that a lot of designers struggle with in a business context is how do you justify having 60 people, 60 designers uh, in a company? Now you have a head start because your CEO is a designer. So that conversation will be a lot easier, but how do you, how do you um, show your relevance to the business? Yeah, so it's... Uh maybe i should kind of uh, state that it's we're not 60 60 plus service designers sure. as such but everyone is aware of service design and has uh, different levels of understanding and awareness and so on so i would say we're like 12 dedicated service designers and it's actually about you not need to show your result you can just you can't just talk about it and, and it, it's easy to get in. I've seen that when I was at uh, SKF and when I was at IKEA and things like that. It's easy that you you talk about it, what if and, and so on. But you need to really find these right uh, uh, questions and and make them actionable. So you actually get something out. You, pre you can't present a, a report. You can't present a report or, or a finding, uh, an insight, without uh, making it uh, actionable. And then you suddenly get a whole cloud of, of options which you can uh, choose from. And that makes it easy for key stakeholders to, to decide then. They don't want to have, to have open questions, even if they've been par part of 
bringing them forward. When they need to go forward, they need to make a decision, and that's on on what they can act on. And um, what I'm hearing you say, presenting an insight isn't enough for stakeholders to act upon. There needs to be a piece of advice, like basically, based on this insight, we would recommend to do X, Y, and Z. Is that what Ex you're saying? Exactly. You you need to understand what 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 do we want to accomplish? And, and through those um, uh, questions, um, narrow in on, on, and through those questions, narrow in on, um, on, on where we would like to go. And uh, it, it needs to be an optional scope. It, you can't just have one, one direction or one uh, decision. Mm -hmm. You need to, to be able to, in time or in effort and things like that, or things that you can act on. And, and when you're able to do that, when you're able to, when you know together, like we're trying to uh, uh, increase conversion or increase retention or all those other business metrics, um, and you're able to sh connect an insight that you have from the service design project to how that could help your stakeholder to actually do that, that's when your business value is justified. Is, is it as simple as that? Yeah, or it uh, it would be nice. It would, yeah, <laughs> there, I know. There's all this, but uh -huh. uh, you, you know, or however, you need to actually m m remove risk as well, uh, because if if you want to do something, it's an assumption always. You can't know until afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so then you need to remove the risk as well. Uh, so how can you? What is the least thing you can do to test this assumption? Uh, and, and that's also a journey in itself to, to uh, remove it from, okay, being as, if it's a big opportunity, then suddenly you, you try to look into the business case of it and it kind of grows and grows. And then when it grows, the activity, the risk increases. So you need to minimize uh, the activity to, to show the, the, the validate the, the, it as quickly as possible. So yeah, this is where, uh, again, a lot of service designers get stuck because there is uh, uh, always a level of uncertainty, of exploration, of risk, and that's not what most managers are in the business of. Most managers are in the uh, exact opposite, like scaling, standardizing. How do you even get started? Yeah, it's, that's, uh, mm -hmm. this is, I think, as you say, this is uh, the continuous challenge of uh, service designers and, and uh, kind of innovators uh, as such to, to uh, move from, from uh, kind of, or actually move stakeholders into the being comfortable with the uncertainty. And if there's a high risk of, of um, of um, jeopardizing what is currently, then then you, the, the economics of, of decisions tell you that you should not uh, make the move. But if there is, a, if you can show metrics that you you uh, you will actually not reach your your goals or, or your your uh, uh, your uh, yeah where you would like to be, or it will be really bad if you. you don't make this small small change, then you will end up uh, down here. Um, then Kahneman has uh, said that uh, it's three times more likely to make that uh, decision uh, going forward if you kind of understand uh, what would happen if you would not do it. Right. Yeah, and this is one, uh, at least from, if I'm interpreting this correctly, showing the price of not doing or not investing in service design. Yeah. Like, like making the opposite business case. We don't know what what the uh, potential benefit will be, but we know if we don't do anything or keep on the same track. Yeah. Like the, the project, right? Is that? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's where metrics come in as well. So you have qualitative and quantitative metrics that can help you with that. and and. Uh, identify sources of, of uh, metrics like uh, customer support, uh, social media, or just talking to customers. And you need well, to, yeah. to 
let that talk for you as well. What, what is the relationship between uh, qualitative and quantitative metrics uh, within your unit? It's actually the customer experience uh, team that has uh, defined that setup and, and also provide all the tools. So we have set up um, dashboards of, of um, metrics that we use to, to identify uh, challenges and where we can act, act on it. Can you give where, one example? Yeah. What is in that dashboard? Just uh, without uh, raising any company secrets. Yeah, but everyone has like net promoting scores and sure. uh, and so on. But also, kind of the most the most common uh, questions from customers, the most uh, frustrations and things like that, where you take the temperature of the of the customer relationship, uh, and and kind of massage that information too so you can actually uh, get something out of it so because data there's no val value if, in data if you you can't uh, uh, make sense of it you need to understand what you're looking for and that's uh, ev everyone can kind of dig into that uh, what well, what is the what is who sees this dashboard within the organization who has uh, who is exposed to it it's uh, the CX team, uh, which uses it as a strategic tool, but also in conjunction with the key stakeholders that are, are uh, responsible for different areas where we have identified or targeted uh, them as uh, stakeholders. Um, yeah. And, and I, I, can, I can imagine that this is a great uh, lever sort of to, to see if you're actually having influence you that you I, I love the idea of just having the most common questions or the most common complaints that's like a really tangible quote unquote metric that you can work on and that it's visible and that it's agreed upon that this is something which is important to the entire organization yeah because you can start to to um uh, to work with the data then that uh, over time, it will be different questions, but it will also be different questions on different markets and so on. And you need to understand that that uh, you, you you have different maturity of, uh, especially in, in, in the EV uh, sector. You can see that uh, in countries where uh, electric vehicles are really established, the maturity is much more different than uh, other markets mm. and, and so on. And you need to act on them uh, locally. I, I, I'm already, and now we're getting into a very technical stuff, but I think it's really crucial. Like maybe in the uh, ideal situation, before doing any service design work, people should think about setting up a, a dashboard just to have an idea of what the thing is that we want to influence together. And often it's very in service design project specific this project wants to influence this and but it it stays like in a very small pocket rather than seeing if you're actually influencing the thing that everybody agreed upon is important yeah i think you're touching upon uh, the area of transparency how do you make uh, insights transparent and available for uh, all stakeholders in in the organization and that's so, something that we have realized um, quite recently. We were looking early on into how, what are the artifacts of the service design and, and using them as a kind of metric on, on how mature the organization is. But we had challenges in, in different teams producing um, customer journeys and, and so on, looking slightly different. And if it's not your topic, you have you have difficulties reading it uh, or understanding it uh, and using it as a reference as well. And that's where we have brought in different tools in the organizations like Miro and Castellens and uh, AHA and, and, and so on. So um, what, do the, what do those tools solve in this situation for you? I think they solve um, a common language, an anchor point for discussion and, and, and reference. So everyone kind of agrees on the same way of picturing uh, what you're talking about. And then, then uh, it's much, me much more easy to, to talk about things. It's like all those uh, 
canvases that we have. They, they create a common language for us. It might not be the perfect uh, uh, visualization, but it's at least the same. And we, we can see, it, see the same thing and understand that we, we come to the table with different perspectives and can use the same language. Yeah. So rather than having uh, conversations where you have to translate what somebody is actually seeing, you can skip that whole part and actually get into the, the stuff that's inside of the whatever artifact you present. And th that must increase speed, efficiency, everybody is happier. Yeah, we're, we're why, just why gonna... Are, yeah, why, yeah. Are, why are, why are uh, service designers seem to be so uh, scattered with using tools? Why? I think if we look at the, the, the it's actually not that many tools uh, that serve us very well mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in that matter. There are like a handful uh, that have kind of risen up the last like two or three years now. And, and uh, before that, uh, we done uh, diagrams and things like that uh, on, um, yeah, from, from different collaboration tools to to uh, even powerpoint and, yeah, and, and yeah. or or excel and, and things like that but we need to have a, have even like using the same colors and things like that so people can subconsciously understand what we're uh, talking about and i think it's about the maturity in the organization or as you talked about before you're a small team and then you start to create a, uh, 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 yeah, uh, your your own own language. But if you need you need it to be part of the whole organization, then you need to start communicate and things like that. And mm. that's also something that we've uh, joined up with the internal communication, explaining on how we work and and the benefits and value of of the work. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's something that I found really fascinating and interesting uh, when we were preparing this talk. You started collaborating with the internal communications department. I think that's a super smart move, but can you explain what is it that you actually do with the internal communication department and how did that um, relationship start? Yeah, it's... Um... Sometimes you, when you talk about strategy and things like that, you, you, you describe strategy as an intent. Uh, but uh, actually, when you look at the truth behind things, it's uh, most strategies are emerging strategies. So this is an emerging strategy based on an opportunity where we have a, a colleague um, uh, joining the, the uh, com communications department, very interested in design thinking. And then reaching out and when we included her in into our organization and then also we had a we have a, a thesis or a master student master thesis student in the organization and, and together they started discussing this and and in our weekly weekly meetings uh, they picked up uh, we also work with uh, uh, okrs and so on and and wait a minute that's uh, something that we could pick up. So organically, it was an opportunity that uh, that showed itself and, and uh, um, an interest from persons that we we kind of nurtured, so to say. And, and what is happening? How is what is what is the synergy between a service design unit and an internal communications department unit? Yeah, so to be able to create a fantastic uh, company, we need to talk, everyone needs to talk to each other and, and uh, we need to create transparency on, on how we work and, uh, and so on. So they are very much helping us with that, that journey and also telling them the story of, of how we use service design to, to find opportunities and then following up on, on how you actually do that and, and so on and then following up on... on, on the perspectives of, of service design and, and the value it gives. So um, I found that really uh, uh, important. Uh, or actually, at IKEA, uh, we did the same uh, when it came to innovation. So it's really important uh, if you're kind of struggling with uh, creating awareness of, of something, you only have so much bandwidth to, to do things. 
So you, you need to find uh, someone to collab collaborate and, and make alliances with. I, uh, uh, when I was still doing service design projects long, long time ago, I, I said that I think 40% of my actual work is communication, capturing what we do, uh, creating a compelling story around that, making sure that people get or it creates awareness. Uh, the reality, I think, is that often we're just too busy doing the actual work to the actual work that we sort of neglect the documentation part the capturing of the story the capturing of the moment and then we arrive at the end of a of a project and we have a deliverable but nobody has seen the journey nobody has seen how it evolved and we sort of miss miss those opportunities well People who are in communication, it's their job. They're even much better at it than we are to to capture and communicate those stories. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I hope it, it. I hope it's working out for you because I think it's a really smart move. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I kind of came upon it in in um, SKF in IKEA and and so on, but. It's really powerful. These uh, you find you can make it into a, a habit after every kind of session that you uh, do with with the, your um, your teams and so on. You 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 um, interview uh, each other on kind of what almost like a retrospect on on what did we do good and and what has this um, given us and so on. And I have a really interesting. Uh, testimonial that uh, I, or colleagues of mine captured at uh, IKEA were the, the ways we worked, we worked a lot with uh, design sprints and so on, uh, where there was an external party joining as an expert and, and just having a testimonial that they have been working with over 40 different companies and, and the, tip, the work that we did now in a week, it typically takes like uh, seven to eight months for uh, for for other companies to do when they do like ordinary pre studies and and so on, so it, it, those testimonials can be really really powerful and then that draws people towards you and and want to collaborate with with you continuously. within the organization. It draws it draws attention within the organization because you're communicating results, you're communicating benefits, you you're creating interest and curiosity, right? Yeah, exactly. Hmm. So it's uh, it's about making people curious about what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Now, you mentioned already a few things, what has changed and evolved over the last few years, like a common language, uh, using the same tools, uh, a dashboard, which sounds really good, working with internal communication. Has your approach evolved or changed in other ways next to the things we already mentioned? I think it's uh, being more clear. Uh, so in the beginning, it was very much organic uh, work and just doing stuff. And as you said, you, you put so much effort into just do a lot of things and then understanding what, what, what matters and, and being more efficient in how we work, how we communicate, how we, all that has been a, a journey for us. And uh, now we're uh, entering into a, a new, phase so to say uh, we have put a lot of things in in place and and suddenly we're, we're having a new reality in front of us how would you describe the new reality what does it look like how is it different than the current reality or yeah. old reality so, <laughs> so we up until now we've been a, a, a well-defined team of, of all those competences that i talked about before service designers business analysts and digital designers who were uh, appointed different tasks together with different teams and, and so on. And now when we move into a, a new setup, a new organization, uh, we move in the service designers into the product organization, the digital product organization. And if you kind of uh, read what uh, many are, are um, writing about challenges in organizations and so on, that, that typically would not work. But we have an, an ace up our sleeve, so to say, with our CEO, who's very design driven. We have the CX team and then also uh, defined alliances around 
uh, what we call uh, uh, journey managers. So you, you kind of lift up that, um, that competence to, to uh, uh, another uh, level uh, where we have actually establishing then uh, um, uh, an alliance with, uh, with uh, uh, those who own the, the customer journey, so to say. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's going to be a new role where people are just like a, maybe a product owner, you'll have a journey owner. Is that like the shift that's all that's going to happen? Exactly. So, mm. and they will work very much in, in, uh, in collaboration. And also uh, we have uh, defined uh, domains of, of uh, products and so on. So, so the service designers will report on a domain level that is corres almost corresponding to the, to the journey manager level. So, so what, could, really what could exciting. be a domain level? Is that like uh, trade-in or repair or like those kind of uh, domains? Yeah, exactly. So um, ownership is a, a broad domain, but uh, you, in uh, the ownership uh, domain, you have uh, you have uh, uh, handover and and uh, and uh, services and things like that. So yeah. we have many micro journeys, uh, kind of making that yeah, area in the, up. In the customer life cycle, you have different stages, and within those stages, you have a lot of journeys or micro journeys, and and people within that same life life cycle stage are in the domain. Okay. Yeah. So, um, where do you hope this will end up in three years? Like you're in a trans you're always in a transition. Uh, it's always moving. But what's the what's the future vision? Yeah, so three years is a really long time. <laughs> I know. Uh, in, in, uh, we've done this in, in less than th uh, three years. And uh, uh, within the next year, we will have this uh, fully working. Uh, and we will have Surf Design as a strategic tool for ma making decisions on what to do and what not to do and, and when and, uh, and so on. And in, within three years, uh, we will have uh, people referencing uh, uh, Polestar. This is how you should work with uh, service design. That's yeah, my yeah. ambition, at least. You or will be our a ambition. <laughs> you will our be a, ambition. A, and and uh, you will be uh, on the show more often. Uh, awesome ambition. That's uh, that's really ambitious, which which is good. Um, now we've. Uh, primarily talked about the things that are working or the things uh, that are going well. But I'm sure that there are also things that you now in hindsight think, well, maybe maybe we could uh, approach it differently uh, or this is a big learning. This was maybe a big mistake. So imagine you could start all over. What is the one thing that you maybe would do differently? Yeah, it's it's always uh, <laughs> easy to be smart in hindsight, but uh, I think the maybe the the customer journey part. Uh, however, it's it's about all those f factors uh, allowing you to, to to do that. We we got in our, our customer experience um, uh, officer in 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 the executive team, and that was actually what kicked off uh, everything uh, to, to actually allow us to, to work further upstream and things like that. So uh, I think it's, if, if I would have the, the influence, uh, I would make sure that we had a, a kind of designer, apart from our, our CEO then, but uh, in, in the executive team as well uh, as we have earlier, mm. uh, that would uh, have helped us uh, uh, a lot, but it's it's from a hindsight. It's uh, organically moving forward, and I think it's about moving, capturing the opportunities, and using service design on yourself and how you work, rather than uh, kind of looking at uh, all the difficulties and things like that, and all the changes, opportunities for you, and that's what service design is all about. I think hmm. capturing that, those opportunities. Yeah, I, and I think this is becoming more and more prevalent that where that you see that you can 
scale service design uh, from their ground up to a certain level, but then you hit a glass floor, glass ceiling. It's not a glass floor. It depends on which level you are. Uh, but then you really need support from the top. You need uh, re leadership to open the way to actually get it to the next maturity level. Yeah. You, you can't talk about people don't understand you, stand you because it's your job to make people understand you. Mm. Uh, so you need to make those alliances and, and create those insights and, and uh, perspectives and, and also understand what other perspectives there is because there is not like one side, it's uh, double-sided, a balance in between. Now, uh, a, a question that just... Uh came to my mind i have a strong opinion about this but what is your take is there are you in a product industry or are you a service industry yeah it's i think that's a balance as well and my personal view is that it's a service industry and it's the crux that no one has actually yet uh, f found uh, the kind of uh, essence of how you move that perspective because as as soon as you have what you define as a product as soon as you have someone using it it's you're serving someone with that product and uh, as soon as you have a relationship to that person who use your product then then it's a service and uh, but if it's uh, just sell and forget maybe you could talk about it as a service, but then it's actually also a service because it's about providing that uh, disposable or kind of uh, product. Uh, so I'm I'm all uh, all focusing on on being it uh, a service, whatever you provide to someone that someone is using. I'm uh, uh, I'm really curious if you had to summarize our last 45 minutes what is the one thing you hope people will remember from this conversation i think uh, i hope people remember that it's all about uh, finding your way and you have that perseverance in 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 yourself and also uh, finding the alliances that you need to make your move yourself uh, forward uh, coming from uh, uh, innovation leadership and innovation management uh, area, it's not about an idea. It's about what you make out of the uh, idea. It's about the doing. And then you need to find ways that suit your environment. There is no kind of uh, silver bullet for, for anything. There is always uh, something that is specific with your organization that you need to take into account and use the service design which you uh, on on yourself on your own organization uh, to move it forward thank you and i can to add one more thing to that i recently had a call with somebody and he asked me if doing a design sprint would help to convince the ceo of the value of service design and I, service design and i asked them what is on the agenda of your CEO? And it was, in this case, it was really about hiring people. And my question was really simply, how is this what you're going to do or what are you proposing going to help your CEO's agenda? If you want to sell service design, if you want to see, show the value of it, you need to connect those two things. And it's exactly like you said, you just need to apply your own thinking and see your CEO, manager, boss, whatever, as the customer and then everything becomes so much easier yeah show it by doing and uh, not just talking about eat, it and eat your own dog food yeah um christian uh, i'm really looking forward to what's going to happen within polestar in the coming months years uh I'm, i hope you'll be able to live up to your ambition because that would mean great things for the entire field um who knows maybe we'll be back in uh a few months together uh and uh doing an update on where we stand so thanks uh, a lot for now for sharing where you are with the service design show community um thank you thank you so much for having me awesome that you made it all the way till the end of this conversation i really hope you got something useful out of it and if you did 
click that like button because that helps to get this conversation in front of other service designers like you. And if you haven't done so already, also click that subscribe button to be notified when new episodes come out. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.